We're in. How do you pronounce it? Krakow? Krakow. Krakow. In Poland? Krakow. With Maya? How do you pronounce your name? Maya. And the That's second the, the name? The full version is Maria. Maria. Maria, which is pretty international. Right. And now you're. Piotrowska. Thank you, Piotrowska. Okay. What's your job, Maya? Okay. Uh, I work for two universities at the moment. So I would say. Uh, in the chronological order, I am a translator, mm -hmm. uh, a teacher, and a researcher. Okay, and your of university? translation studies. And I'm based in Krakow, Pedagogical University of okay. Krakow. And I also am a lecturer at the Jagiellonian University. Okay, and you have a chair yes, in yes, translation yes. pedagogy. Uh, the, right? the chair's name is Chair for Translator Education, okay. which is at the Faculty of Modern Languages of the Pedagogical University. Okay, and that's the only chair I know of in the world that is in translator education. Thank is you. Is that right? I that's, don't know. That was our idea. It. That was yes. our idea to have something and do not repeat other <laughs> ideas. <laughs> so uh, we, we focus on translator education in our research and okay. also in our activities, I would say. Okay, so, so, so you do you translate as well? Uh, or, or recently, you... less and less, mm -hmm. but I am a sworn translator oh, right. okay. of Polish and English, yes. and that's my original experience in translation. That's how all of it started, actually. Okay. I'm not a literary translator. I'm, I'm, I used to translate a lot of legal texts yeah. and all kinds of others, but not literature. Okay, well, let's go back and we'll build this up. If In right. your mid-twenties... I'm You're still from at, here? Yes, from yes. Yeah, so Which is, I would say, a Polish peculiarity in a way. We are home-based, usually, and we are mobile up to a point. So we, we travel, we like traveling. Within Poland or Not necessarily. Outside? We like, we're, we have a lot of interest in global culture or mm -hmm. other cultures, but ultimately we often come back. Yes? To, the, okay. to our home. <laughs> so, so in your mid-twenties, what were you doing? Yeah. Studying. At Jagiellonian University, right, yeah. right here in Krakow. Just, yeah, mm -hmm. What were you studying? And also in the United States of America, Minnesota State University, mm -hmm. briefly for a year. Mm -hmm. What? What? It was English philology. Okay. With right. translation seminar. Okay. Was so that practical translation or theoretical? We or? did. We did. Uh, we had a, a like one single module of translating English Polish or uh, Polish English. Mm -hmm. But it was still at the department, at the, at the language um, studies department. So it's in a modern languages degree, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. for training translators? No, 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 the, the original degree is English Philology. Okay, English okay. Philology. okay. And that's mm -hmm. to BA level or MA, MA as well? MA, Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and in those days, uh, we didn't have, it was pre-Bologna, much, much earlier than... Uh, the Bologna system, mm -hmm. and in Poland we had a full program of MA studies, five years. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. After that, what did you do? And after that I became a sworn translator. Because is, is that in Poland a separate exam you have to pass? Uh, it? Yes, it is these days, but mm -hmm. in the past um, it was enough to be a graduate of oh. a given philology. Okay. And um, it was obligatory to, to be of age, of certain age, yes. and the age was the, the limit was 26, so you couldn't become a translator prior to okay, that. Okay. So I became a sworn translator as early as I could, yeah. and it was always like my fascination. Really? Yes. Yeah. And so you, you lived on that professionally, or what, uh, what was the engagement with translation? Uh, in three basic areas, I would say. Practical translating, then teaching. And that was really the sequence. First you teaching, were teaching straight away then? Yeah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, after graduation. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then doing research. Okay, okay. Uh, and I started teach by teaching uh, single translation courses, very practical courses, and then it slowly expanded throughout the years. And now at Pedagogical University we have undergraduate program and graduate program in translation. Um, and also PhD students and, um, well, just the, the expansion mm -hmm. of uh, those curricula and uh, translation modules was tremendous. 
during my um, academic career period. We, we started from scratch, from really nothing. And I um, often recall the moments when, uh, at the beginning of my um, work as, a, as an academic, uh, there was a single copy of a book, let's say, a publication on translation studies, really? one in the library, available really? in those days, yes. Yeah. We are talking end of 1980s uh, and early 1990s. Yeah, but Poles have a tradition, and certainly. Yes, a, but it was very hard in those days because of all the civilizational uh, conditioning, because, you know, it was the moment when Poland uh, transited from... Yes, okay communist oh, yeah. background to free market economy and roundtable discussions, solidarity movement. So it was still a completely different uh, environment also for scholarly work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we are slowly and gradually expanding in what we're doing, uh, teaching translation, researching translation, and doing translation, and I think, and at the moment, we have quite a, a reasonable number of candidates to so our before, program. Before we get on to that, right. you, mm -hmm. if you're doing translator education, you, you have a background in, in modern languages, in translation practice, some theory. And also pedagogy. Yes, mm -hmm. so, so that's teaching. the thing. You, you, where does that come in from? Do you have uh, training in that or colleagues who work in that? It's and education instruction in modern languages. Okay, so no the methods aren't different. in education for translators or pedagogy for, for translators, right. uh, but language teachers. Are the methods different? Uh, well, um, pedag translation pedagogy, of course, implements many paradigms or models, methods, certain assumptions from methodology for foreign language yes. teaching. It's true. But it is also specific because of the field specificity. I mean, language learning is different from translation learning as, as a field. So okay. there is some overlap and there is a tradition of implementing methods okay. and, and resources and okay. some tools. Just thinking on the level of the kinds of activities one does in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Surely there's a lot that we can learn from the work on second second language teaching. True, yes. So, Definitely. Uh, there is a whole um, um, like area of field for classroom methodology and procedures that we uh, try to copy in a creative way for mm -hmm. uh, in, in the translation classroom. Class dynamics mm -hmm. methodology and a lot of psycholinguistic knowledge mm -hmm. that is also used for, for Problem solving, decision making, okay. all of these are, um, come handy for translation teachers as well. What about the research component then? You, um, you, you, you're doing research on translation edu translator education? Education, yes. What, what? There have been, like in our institution just a um, few years ago, we started with some PhD projects on um, psycholinguistic and affective <laughs> factors. So this is in looking teaching, okay. like translator integrity, translator training, wait, 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 what, what's, translator what trainer is, what is, profile. What is integrity? Integrity has to do with uh, certain effective and uh, professional factors that come into play um, in the sociological context of teaching. So it has to do with the psychology of translation as well as sociology of translation. In the and classroom like or in, in the workplace? Uh, in the classroom. In the in classroom, the classroom. Okay. yes. Right. We're interested in... So are you observing in, in the, uh, classroom interactions or what's the basis of um, the research? At the moment, um, what we started doing is we started from the historical perspective. So we are trying to inquire into what has been done in the area of uh, translator training, uh, translator trainer education yes. so far. Yes. So um, we're doing some bibliographical work, okay. uh, inquiring into other patterns of educating trainers, mm -hmm. and there are a few because there are no full-time programs for translator mm -hmm. education. So we we're checking that, and uh, we will be doing some uh, we will be doing some studies into 
classroom behavior, so to speak, and, and classroom procedures used okay. by trainers. Okay. So that's more or less um, some perspective. Okay. For the work you're doing, are there any particular approaches to translation that are better than others? I think, yeah, well, yes, I think there are some, although um, researchers, well, it comes with um, inspirations that we get for our uh, research and, and professional work, um, and ideas are hardly ever born in the void. So we usually are inspired by some theories mm -hmm. and insight coming from whatever we read and listen so, to. So in Poland, here. what would be the uh, in most Poland, inspiring? In Poland, huge inspiration is uh, cognitive linguistics okay. yes. and Professor uh, Elżbieta Tabakowska's work. That's evident and, and it's visible in publications. Right. And I think recently, because of our involvement in... Um, teaching methodologies and also the relevance of research for professional purposes. Functionalism would be mm -hmm. quite relevant and epistemologically, didactically, um, socio-constructivism and also more, more recent approaches to individualistic learning mm -hmm. um, catch up with, with what we're doing. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Do you think that just as we, we look at second language acquisition methods or teaching methods, do you think we should be doing more uh, to do with the role of translation in learning foreign languages? That is, instead of adapting the outside I, to, to training translators. I do believe in some uh, recursive patterns. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say, I think. Okay, <laughs> okay so we have the understanding. And I do believe that we can learn a lot from certain historical research and um, translation discourse from the past. Mm -hmm. And there were studies into uh, language learning, foreign language learning. Um, and then translation studies, in a way, neglected that or yes, forgot yes. about those or because we were too occupied. They forgot about us too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were very <laughs> occupied with new technologies and some new ideas. Yes. And language was like left aside, yes. and language learning yes. was left aside. And I think it's time to re-inquire into the field. And there is okay. there is a lot of potential there. Do you think translation is well understood um, outside of translation studies? Too? Not really. No, we had uh, many debates on interdisciplinarity of translation and mm -hmm. on the uh, cultural studies. Um, um, influence on translation studies yes. and vice versa, but I don't think that popular awareness of what translation means and what translation research is is not is still not uh, fully satisfying. It means that uh, researchers from other fields perhaps need more enlightenment into what translation studies does. Okay. That's a very and polite, the value of polite way of putting it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Final question, Maya. What Are there any particular kinds of research that you think we need to be doing? Mm -hmm. that is, if you were starting your doctorate now, what, what, what would you recommend to huge, doctors? Huge, huge, yes. And it depends. I think it is the needs um, um, are related to particular research environments. And that has to do with the background, both institutional and cultural. So there are certain parts of the world that would need more research into one particular mm -hmm. aspect and others um, in, in different subjects. So it is, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid to be very global. How about in Poland? Let's be local. Um, let's be local. Um, I think there is huge potential for inquiring into psycholinguistic aspects, um, uh, studies of the process of translation, mm -hmm. but empirical studies, mm -hmm. which are very difficult and very challenging and demanding, and that's why there are not that many of mm -hmm. those. Um, we've done a lot into literary uh, translation, so uh, and, and the transition now is towards professionalizing the mm -hmm. discipline, and um, a lot happens there. Um, Obviously, uh, in the field of translator education, there is a lot of uh, opportunities for research. 
but research not based on reading, but research based on case studies mm -hmm. and um, empirical methods. So, and, and there is a lot of room for statistics and um, quantitative studies and market research, um, observations on what actually happens and how, is, how, how that is, the, the, the state of affairs in translation industry, how that correlates with what we think theoretically. Um, and I've always believed in the humanistic um, aspect of translation because I think translation is understanding another point of view and this humanitarian side of translation is important. So that's why I think community interpreting, for example, which, mm -hmm. let's say, in Poland is not that huge of a topic because of homogeneity of the Polish culture yet, but perhaps that's the stage now. Um, new technologies, well, but it's... Yeah, that's not really my field, so I would like to <laughs> to be drowned in the in the in the domain that I'm not definitely an expert. Okay, in. I think there's plenty of work to Already. do. Already, yes. Oh now. yes, yes. I, I see a lot of uh, new projects that are relevant and useful, and um, young researchers have a lot of opportunities okay. to realize their goals. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.